on, I just want you to just, just close your eyes now. Just, I want you just to lift your hands and, and just love on Him. Ephesians says, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. That's how you get drunk. That's how you get drunk tonight. Hallelujah. Yes. We don't need eggnog. We got the wine of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Fill these wine skins with new wine. Lord, I'm going to give you a new heart. <laughs> and I'm waiting on you, Jesus, to fill it. Fill me with new wine tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> Lord God, men drink to get rid of their troubles. Hallelujah. Lord, we're going to worship you. Not to forget about our troubles, but God, to hand them to you. Hallelujah. So we bless you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. Yeah. Yes, my Jesus. Enjoy my peace, my child. I give you abundant peace and joy. <laughs> it comes with no strings attached. It's yours. It's yours to enjoy. Yeah. We drink from your wells. We draw deep from the well of salvation. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! With joy, great joy, we drink from your well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm asking you tonight to blaze some new trails for us to walk. Hallelujah. Lord, we... There's familiar trails that have led us to depression and despondency. And, Lord, some of us might have started walking that trail again. But, Father God, I see to my right hand that there's a fresh blaze trail. Oh, God, right now, I'm going to turn and go in your direction. I hear your, your spirit say, follow me. I hear that voice saying, this is the way. Walk this way. So, Father God, we're going to follow you right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to walk with you, Jesus. Yes. I'm going to walk with you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Jesus messed up a lot of funerals, but he never, he never went there and said, you know, there's no reason for you, you to grieve. You know, he, he didn't deny the reality, especially when he told Jairus' uh, 
Jairus that his daughter wasn't dead. She was just asleep. He was speaking the truth. <laughs> she, her, her physical body may, may not be working, but she's not gone. So he wasn't denying the, 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 the physical reality. He just saw a reality that was bigger than the natural. Hallelujah. So the Lord wants us tonight just to get a, get a view that is, is beyond the natural, to see things through the eyes of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, give us an eye to see and give us an ear to hear what the Spirit would say tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. The king of my heart, be the shadow where I hide. The ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, oh you are good. Let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good. Tell him, tell him. Oh, oh, you are good, good. Oh, oh, yes, you are good. Come on, my God. Oh, oh, you are good, good. Oh, oh. you're never going to let, you're never going to let me die. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. For you are good, good. Oh, oh. yes, you are good, good. Oh. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. The king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, oh, yes, you are good, good. Oh, oh, you are good, so good. You are good, good. Oh, oh. Lord, I thank you that you're never going to let me down. Hallelujah, you are good, you're so good, oh, you are good.
God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, church, church, come on, just tell him. I want you to tell him. I want you to express, express out of, out of your very spirit, man. God, no matter what, you're good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are good. You're never going to not be good, Lord. You're never going to not be good. You're always going to be good. You've never been anything but good to me. <laughs> Come on now. You've never been anything but good to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are good, Lord. You're so good. Oh, 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 you are good. Good. Oh, oh. I don't know if y'all saw Bethany uh, at the funeral. They didn't record the song, and so I'm, I'm kind of upset about that, but. You know, it seemed like at, at almost every funeral we've had the last few years, the Lord has given her a song and uh, just some powerful stuff she's done. And this was no different when her and Guillermo and Tammy went to tell Dad that, uh, that Debbie had passed away. You know, we had just left his house a few hours before, and he was already in bed. And to hear, you know, Bethany told the story that when they got there and they, they told him what had happened, you know, he broke down and he wept like anybody would. When he got done weeping, she said he stood up and he raised his hands and he began to worship God. He just, as she said, he began to pray heaven down in that house. And Bethany said, Papa, I just can't, I can't believe the, the faith that that, that that must have taken. He said, honey, he said, I can't do anything with this grief but put it in those nail-scarred hands. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We're not, we're, we're not hopeless here tonight, church. You hear me? We're not hopeless. <laughs> My God. My God. We're not hopeless tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey! We're not hopeless. He's good. You're so good, so good, so good. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, come on. Come on, that, that's the victory ground right there. That's the ground of victory. Hallelujah. Stand beside that dead thing and lift those hands and say, My God is a good God. He is a faithful God. And he's watching over his word to me. <laughs> Amen. Let's go home. <laughs> Yes, sir. I find no fault in him. Yes, sir. Amen. He's good. And he's never not been good. And he's never not going to be good. Find no fault in him. <laughs> find no fault in him. <laughs> oh, there's just a worship in my heart tonight. I just want to give him praise. I want to thank God for everything. Hallelujah. In everything, give thanks. 
because the Lord is good. In everything give thanks, yes, because he's so good. <laughs> so make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing and know that he is God. He is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We're his people. We're the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving and enter his gates with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name because the Lord is good, good. Oh, oh. he is good, so good. Oh, oh, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth will endure through all generations. So I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm going to bless the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to praise his name right now. <laughs> if you don't want to praise him, then hold my mule. <laughs> I'm going to praise <laughs> You are good. When he rolled up his sleeves, he ain't just putting on the ritz. Our God is an awesome. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. I want to say that first part again. <laughs> when he rolled up his sleeves, he ain't just putting on the ritz. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. And he wasn't just a Joking when he kicked him out of Eden, there wasn't that shed his blood. His return is very soon, so you better be believing. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome We bless you, Lord. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah! I just want to run around here, just pray. <laughs> that there is something. There's two banks to the river of the Spirit. Now let me, <laughs> dear God, we'll just go there, Holy Ghost. So Jesus said in John seven thirty seven that there was a, a river of the Spirit that's supposed to be flowing out of us. Rivers are not just the, they're not just floodwaters. They 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 they're going somewhere. They've got an established uh, pattern. 
and they're, they're, they've got a function that they play. And there's two banks on this river. There's the bank of prayer and the bank of praise. Amen. Come on. If the ba- you, <laughs> you keep those banks built up, and that river's going to go where, it, where it's intended to go. Come on. God has a purpose in this thing. If we, if, if we will pray, he will answer. Is that what it said? It said, you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you're messed up in your motive. And the other thing is, is that men ought always to give him pra- to praise him. We ought to always pray and not faint, but we ought to always be praising him. Amen. Amen. That, that, that the, uh, the, the, what is it? The, therefore, let us offer unto God that sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of my lips, the offspring, the outflowing of my lips, giving thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Not everything in your life is is God's will, is his purpose for you, but in it all, you are to give thanks for it. It is God's will that you learn to praise him in every situation. In every situation. How does a father lift his hands and praise God when he just received news not ten minutes before that his daughter, parents are not supposed to bury their kids. Nothing harder than that. I... (laughs) But that old man of God raised his hands and praised him in the middle of that. I don't understand that. Pastor, I don't understand that. I know. That's because it's super to the natural of man. We are supernatural beings. You hear me? Look, you are a supernatural being. What what God has done in you is not natural. It's not meant to be natural. And that supernatural kind of praise that in every... It's Job. Though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. It's like, what? Job, you've lost everything. No, I hadn't. <laughs> I hadn't lost everything. My God, I've got a God that is still for me, not against me. I might have lost everything that you can see, but i got something in here you cannot see that I cannot lose. My Lord. Hmm. That's a Christmas present right there. That's keeping the banks, flow, keeping the river flowing. If you're going to keep the river of the Spirit flowing, you're going to have to learn to pray, and you're going to have to learn to praise. <sighs> you know, we, and I've I, I preached this in, this in this house before, that, that the, the glory of God is not something that falls from heaven like at, at the whim of God. It's produced by the people of God. Psalmist said, give him glory, all ye people. Give him glory, you say. That's something we produce. And I'm telling you, there's not greater glory than when you feel like at the least you stand up. When the devil says, I got you now. (laughs) Yeah, watch this. (laughs) I will yet praise him who is the help of my countenance. He is the glory and the lifter of my head. That's praise. God teaches to praise you in the middle of it all. So, Father, in this this, uh, atmosphere of worship and praise, we thank you that you're sending awakening to the United States of America, that the division we're seeing in Washington, D.C., and the plot and the plan of the politicians to destroy this nation by bringing in the sin. Oh God, what's going on in in Hallmark and in Chick-fil-A, Lord, the things that Christians were putting their hope in, God, you are, I see you pulling out all of the the, the foundations that that are quicksand. So you're you're shaking everything that can be shaken so that only those things that cannot be shaken will remain in our hearts. So, Lord, we're not looking to Washington for the answers. We're looking to you, Lord. But, but God, we pray. We know this division that's in this nation is, is a judgment from heaven, and it's a fruit of hell. And so, Father God, I pray for peace on earth. It's what, you, it's what the angel said what, that, that Jesus came to bring. So, Lord, we come into alignment with your will, and we pray for peace on this earth. 
And Lord, I know the devil ain't never going to let us live in peace as long as we're Holy Ghost-filled Christians. As long as we don't compromise, he's going to hate us. But Father God, I'm asking you to give your children, teach us how to live in peace even in the middle of the storm. By praising, by praying, and by keeping the river of the Holy Ghost flowing. By pray speaking to ourselves, praying in the Spirit. Oh God, fill us with the Holy Ghost that cannot be quenched. By what we see, God, there must be a supernatural, subterranean flow in our lives. Lord, I pray. I pray for our president. Oh, God, I, I, I pray for this land. Jesus, send awakening. Send awakening, Lord. We cry out for awakening. We cry, Lord, not just revival where people are rolling on the floor, but, God, revival where men repent of sin. God, where the homosexual is delivered, the drug addict is delivered. Lord, the religious, the religious person, their eyes are open and they repent for their religiosity. God, they see you for who you really are. Lord, start with me as the pastor of this church, God. Lord, awaken my own heart. God, do what you want to do in me. Lord, every one of us praying that tonight, Lord, have your way in our hearts and in our lives. We ask you, Lord Jesus, because you're never going to let us down. God, let, let this work. <laughs> he that has begun a good work in you is going to see it through all the way to the end. Lord, do this, do this thing in us. <laughs> do it, do, let us agree with heaven so, so the work that you've begun will be done right in us. Lord, don't let us t uh, 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 hinder it or contaminate it with our own agendas and ideas. Oh, Lord, come have your way. Father, this Christmas season, I pray for sons and daughters to be born into the kingdom. I pray prodigals come to an awakening. Father, I pray that, that men and women, that, that relationships are restored, that, God, that, that Christians that have been playing games with, with you, God, co coddling their sin while pretending to be holy. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Lord, I, I don't want you to expose them to the community, but God, God, call them on it. <laughs> Jesus, let, let, let your ministers weep between the porch and the altar, saying, Spare thy people. Oh, God, it's my prayer tonight. I lift you up, and I thank you for what you're doing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wow. What's God doing? What's, what's the Holy Ghost revealing to you folks? I, I got some notes here, but I ain't going to them until till he's done here. What's, what, what's the Lord revealing to you? Somebody got something. I'm just sitting there riding the coattails, huh? All right. <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. This, this. Come on, preach, buddy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Oh, come on, buddy. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The walls are. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prayer and praise. Amen. <laughs> you know, I, I thank God for the floods. You know, floods are, are, are damaging at times, but they're also needed. They, they, they do some good work. But the cool thing about a river, once that flood water goes back, those banks are still there. 
I'm telling you. Come on, there's a message for the church right there, y'all. You, you, you get this established firmly in your spirit, and if, you, and if, if there's a part of you that, that has trouble getting your mind around either one of the aspects, well, Pastor, I just don't like to pray. Well, then it, the Bible doesn't really say love to pray. It says you have to pray. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I've, I've heard people when we, you know, when, er, in the early days, we had this prayer meeting on Monday nights. People say, well, I just don't get anything out of it. I'm like, well, dear God, who said you're supposed to get anything out of it? This ain't for you. It, it, it's, it's in obedience to God pulling down strongholds. We're trying to, we're trying to birth revival in this community, and it's not going to come without a church that is committed to prayer. Now, praise, we can, we can, we can mistake uh, emotion for praise. But they're two different things now. I, I mean, there's emotion in praise. Don't get me wrong. I, I love what I feel when I praise. But I, I will assure you, that night, December the 1st, when my, my dad got up and he began to worship God, he felt, he didn't feel no doodads running up and down. This is something he's trained his spirit man in the good times. My Lord, come on. <laughs> I'm going to praise him right now. Because I've learned this is how I sustain the spiritual flow. Whew, that is revelation. Glory. <laughs> there was something good about Good Friday. <laughs> the bank is there and the river's deeper when them flood water. That's right. All the impediments, the blockages are washed out of the way. Yeah, and, and, and Walter, I keep wanting to call you wrong names. Walter, you, you see that when you're flying in that airplane coming into Houston to land. You can see either whether it's the San Jacinto or whatever them rivers are you're flying over. You can see them twisting and turning, and then, then every once in a while you see a little horseshoe lake. That's where that river is, has cut a little different path. God, I ain't going to get off of this, am I? Okay, we'll just stay with it. Go to, you, you can read about it in Ezekiel 37 tonight when I'm done. But listen, listen, there is, there is a purpose. This river is going to cut a new path, and if you're not in the very center of the flow, you can get left in that little oxbow lake, and we call that a slough back in East Texas. It's stagnant water. Come on. My God, I don't want no stagnant water. I want to be right in the middle of that flow. Hey! So one side, I'm going to pray. Because men ought always to pray and not faint. On the other side, I'm going to worship him anyhow. Whew. That'll keep me in the middle. And when the river decides to cut something off here, I'm going with that river. If it's a choice between you and the river, I love you, but I'm going to leave you. <laughs> you hear me? I love you, but I can't stay. I got to go. I'm going to stay in the flow. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm wanting to reach for that Bible, but I'm holding it. <laughs> so, why don't we just say like this right here? Who needs who needs prayer right now to get back into the middle of the bank, back in the middle of the river? Amen. Well, let me say that out loud so these folks can hear it. I put that mic back to pick up you know, some of it. Peter, Peter, Peter walked on the water. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Stay in between the banks, but you can go from bank to bank. Go from praise to prayer. Go from prayer to, pl to praise. Amen. You don't, don't, keep, what did uh, uh, Robbie Mitchell say? Keep that bubble in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You know, just don't get, don't get too far to an extreme. Stay right here in the middle of the river, and you're not going to miss it. 
I, I'm telling you, the will of God is such that the man or woman of God that is truly hungering and thirsting and is praying and worshiping, he ain't going to miss it. Oh, Pastor, I just want to know the will of God. Well, just stay in it. <laughs> stay in it. Come on. Don't, 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 don't. Just don't get out of it. Well, well what's, what am I supposed to do? I, you know, that, that river will let you know. That river will take you right where you need to go. Being available and a willing vessel. Keep going. I'm just going to repeat for the camera. Being open to the Holy Spirit to you. Available and a willing vessel. Mm. Now you done messed up and started preaching. <laughs> that there's the, we found the trouble. <laughs> the word says if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, see there's always another side to that coin. There's always another side to that coin. <laughs> you got to be fat. That was a Guillermo thing. Faithful, available. I am fat. No, that's not what we're talking about. Faithful, available, and teachable. You see, if, if, if we're available, if, and if we're just sensitive and yielded to the Holy Ghost, then, then he will be able to, to position us where we need to be. We don't need to worry. Moses never, not one morning, did he wake up and scratch his head and say, I wonder where man is going to be this morning. Never. All he had to do when he went to bed at night was make sure that that tent was pitched under that cloud. That's all he had to do. You hear me? Because the next morning, manna was going to be right there. Oh, dear God. Somebody ought to run. I feel that down in the bottom of my feet. Quit stressing over, am I in the will of God? Am I in the will of God? Am I in the will of God? Well, if you're in between the banks of prayer and praise and you, that river of the Spirit is flowing, then the Holy Ghost is going to keep you right where you need to be. The doors will, don't be trying to kick doors open. Come, that river is going to blow the door wide open and you just go, whoo, it's going to flow right into it. Wow. It's good for somebody. Maybe none of y'all. Maybe them folks on TV here. <laughs> but we just, it's just available. Beautiful. Be available. Faithful. Available. Teachable. But the availability is, is the thing. Brother Clendenin used to say, he said, God, God wants to talk to you, but he's not going to talk to you between commercials. <laughs> that old man was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I've done it. I've been there on Saturday reading my Bible and, you know, having that TV on. About, I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I need to watch this. And a commercial come on and I open that book back up and I can hear that old man of God with that. He had a finger that was that long. <laughs> God ain't going to talk to you between commercials. He come back from the dead and hammered me. <laughs> Faithful, available. Teachable, be taught of the Holy Ghost, flowing and functioning just like he wants us to be. You know, everything, everything is, is about the flow. And I have, I, have, I have caught fish in the Guadalupe River, crystal clear water. You can run them trot lines, you can see them fish swimming down there before you ever get to them. Isn't that cool? But most of my life, I fished in the Trinity. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't ring a bell to any of y'all, does it? It's, it's kind of like, like these rivers down here. It, 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 like it's, just, it's just like the brass. It's probably not as much water. I mean, I mean it, it looks like coffee with about a, about, about a half a cup of coffee and a whole cup of, of, of cream. You know, it's just, it's just old murky, nasty stuff. Come on. <laughs> Oh, I don't know where I was headed for that. That that come in there and it took me right away. <laughs> that rabbit. That wasn't a rabbit. It was a it was a point. Fishing, yeah, fishing. So, so you know, it's 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 there's rivers. This river is clean and clear. This river is 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 different. The, the thing is, the flows are going to be a little different, but it doesn't mean it's not God. Come on. That that gets back to your to your one accord kind of thing. Oh, yeah. 
As, there you go. The earth has something to do with the clarity of the water. That has something to do with us. You know, that, 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 that Guadalupe is running through rocks, so it doesn't pick up a lot of dirt. This stuff coming down here, just running through Sandy Loam up there around Waco, Texas, and bringing it all right down here. All right, that's enough of the geography lesson. The point is, God wants you. He's after something in us. He's after something in you. I want to I want to bring this really home before we before we migrate away from it. He's after something in you. It is not the will of God that you be left behind when the river decides to cut a corner and cut that oxbow lake off. That's that's not God's will to leave you there. He wants to pull you right along with him. So, Father, I just ask you for, for myself and for this body that, Lord, you've given, you've birthed within us a sensitivity. Lord, this church, we're, we're, we're all coming here feeling after you, feeling after the Holy Ghost. Where are you leading us? So, Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would give us a, an ear that is so attuned to your voice that we don't miss you. Lord, I pray that you would give us an eye to see, Lord, where where you're working, where you're, you're leading. I don't want to miss what you're doing, Lord, especially in this season. God, I believe that we're living in, 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 in climactic days. Lord, I believe that, that, that things could get really ugly in 2020. I, I, I don't know. It's either going to be riot or revival, but there's going to be one of the two. So, Holy Spirit, I, I know that I will never... Be positioned where you want me to be in 2020 unless I'm leaning more to the arm of the Spirit than the arm of the flesh. So, Father, help me to, to crucify this flesh. To put down the old man, lift up the new man, and let you speak. Lead us. Oh, God. Lord, you're the only one that knows what's coming next year. Oh, the result of, of, of what, what Congress is doing tonight can send this nation into, into a civil war in, in a blink of an eye. So, Father, we pray over this right now. God, we want to hear you. We're never going to, the, the wrath of man is never going to do the will of God. Lord, let me hear that because I get angry sometimes. I get angry and I want to take things and matters into my own hands. And there's still... There's still enough of that old man in me alive that could send me to hell if I'm not careful. So, Father, what, put a watch over my life. Let the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. That's my prayer tonight, Lord. Not only for me, but for this house. We must do the will of God. If we're going to do the will of God, we're going to have to think the will of God. So, Lord, let us think rightly. Let us speak rightly. Please say something. I, I, and I really need to do this because there are probably people out there going, get them on the mic because they're, they're in church with us too. Yes, I'll hold it. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and a lot of things are going to happen. They're going to be exposed. And he, sh he showed me this. He, taught, he sh told me this, and I'm like, wow. And... Um, like you just mentioned earlier, Hallmark and Chick-fil-A, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be more coming up, and yeah. we cannot be shocked and, and faint. Or shaken, yeah. yes. Yeah. We got to stand. If nothing else, the Bible says to stand. Yes. And we cannot depend on man. Mm. That's we it. I, I believe that's the message right God. there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I had a dream, and I'm not going to share it right now, but anyway, the Lord has just been dealing with me, with me and mm -hmm. my family. And like I've talked to my, my uncle, my family that members that they need to get on board because Amen. We don't know the day or the time. We don't know the day of that hour. No. That rapture's ahead of us. <laughs> well, death <coughs> death. And death. It's either yeah. heaven or hell. Yeah. And you just confirmed it when you said and this whole week he's been giving me second Corinthians ten. Hold down strongholds. Strongholds. And about the United States, yeah, we need to pray for our president. He's mm. told me the Lord Pray for the president. Pray 
for Israel, pray yeah. for his family, Vice President, regardless if you voted for him or not, yeah. you continue praying for our, the nation. Amen. Amen. We got to continue praying for the pastors because yes. there's a lot of pastors. Yes, that's that right. They're not saying what the word of God says. Right. They're compromising. Yeah. And w- we got to mm. pray for the pastors mm. regardless mm. because Amen. It, times are, they're vital, yeah. Pastor. Yes. They're vital. And, and it's like, <laughs> I don't know how to tell you, but I, I just have warnings, you know. It's like when I get up in the morning, it's like, oh, my gosh. You know, and God is just giving me scriptures. Yeah. And when I come in Sunday in the morning, I pray, and I just ask God to reveal himself to this church. Yes. To Amen. To this church. Amen. Because if you're hungry, he's going to feed you. And yes. he's going to lead you. Amen. To where he needs for you. See, it's where we need to be, not where I want to be. Come on, preach. Uh, now th- this young lady, this is not her church. She goes to another yeah. church in town, but she's here praying every Sunday morning with the ladies. The uh, Lord led me here. Cause <laughs> <laughs> we were coming from San Antonio, my husband and I, and I was just telling the Lord, Lord, there's, there's something that we got to do in the morning to pray. And sure enough, when we are passing here, I saw the sign. I'm like, there it is. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Careful. Amen. But the Lord is dealing with yeah. a lot of uh, Is she the only one feeling this? Absolutely. No. We we all are sensing. And, and, and friends, that, that's the Bible says that God does nothing but that he reveals it to his servants. Who? Who? The prophets. Who is the prophet in this day? The church. The church is the prophet. And if we could get our mind around that, when we hear the word prophet, we're looking for an individual. But God said, no, the prophet is the one that reveals the plan and the purpose of God to the nation. Who reveals the plan and purpose of God to the nation but the church? Boy, that was an enthusiastic amen. But you're, you need to study that out. You're going to find that it, it, Jesus Christ invested all in the ecclesia. The church. You go to what First Corinthians five. The 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 man that was uh, was was sleeping with his stepmother. Paul said, "You put him out of the church." Now, if that was today, he'd just go down the street to another one. Come on. That's if he would even be put out of the church. <coughs> But the thought process is when the church rebukes you, you are rebuked. It's, it's because we act for heaven. And you go ahead and you read that out, that, that you follow that trail from 1 Corinthians into 2 Corinthians, and you'll see that when the church walks in unity, stays in between the banks, when the river is flowing, when that church speaks, that is heaven speaking. You understand that? So it, it, is, it is why God is always dealing with me and with you. Not necessarily just for us on an individual line, but for us on a corporate line. Because when every joint, I said this last week, when every joint is is in its proper place, it supplies what is lacking. You know, so you may not have a piece of the puzzle but that I've got. Amen. I don't have what you've got. But when we come together in unity and the fivefold ministry is flowing, come on. Every jo- there is no lack, then that church raises up. And when that church speaks into this community, it is the very voice of heaven. And the, the foundations of hell are shaken. And the kingdom of heaven is, is established. Come on. Because it's not an individual man. It is a corporate man, Christ. He's the head, and we are his body. When we rebuke, we, it, it's rebuked. What, what you bind on earth, he said, to that church is bound in heaven. Now, what does that mean? I'm just now really getting the revelation of this, that it's not, <clears throat> I have authority to deal with things right here on this earth. And if I'll take care of my business, God will take care of it in the spirit realm. Now, now that, 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 that whale is deep there. <clears throat> I'm telling you, if I will take care of business here, 
binding and loosing here. God's going to take care of the, the principalities and the powers. Come on, you hear me? But I can't, I can't live sloppy here. <laughs> and they, and You got it? So there's an order. It's imperative. It's where we were going to kind of go tonight, but I guess we're not going to go there yet. But they knew they they knew they they took knowledge. They'd been with Jesus. They knew there was something different. The, it, 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 here's the thing: when the church is in that river, and the church speaks, what do they say about Jesus? Man, ain't never nobody's ever spoke like this man. Nobody's that he because he preaches with authority. He's dead and gone. Here comes Peter, James, and John. They go. They they heal the lame man. They beat him. Throw him in prison. And they said that they these are ignorant and unlearned fishermen. Where are they coming up with? It's that same anointing. Their speech was with authority. They were acting not as an individual man. They were acting as the corporate man. My God in heaven. There is an authority that God has reserved for you and I. It's why I get so incensed when people start poo-pooing the church. Church this, church that. I, you know, Don't do it on my Facebook page. Don't do it where I can see. Unfriend me before you say that. Because I'm coming at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't mess with the church. You don't, you don't, you don't castigate the church. It's, are we perfect? No. But we better be better off this year than we were last year. pa da pa come on. All right, dear Lord Jesus. <laughs> it ain't pastor. No, no, come on, church. <laughs> come on, joints. <laughs> Supply. Flow. There, 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 there's just the, the purpose of God that is, is try, the Holy Spirit is forever on a Sunday morning trying to position us. And I, I told this here just a few weeks ago, I think, but it's the first thing that just popped into my mind is, you know, when those, those uh, uh, geese flying south for the winter, when they hit those thermals. You know, you see them in a V, they're all flapping, but then when they hit those thermals, they quit flapping, and they just stick those wings out and start flying in a circle. And uh, I was at my mother's house, and they were, uh, they'd been flying over my head all day long. And then one, I could hear one group coming, and I'm, I'm studying, preparing, getting ready to preach at, at that church in Waco up there and, and before I was on staff with them. And I heard that their, their, no, their, their communication changed. They got excited. It sounded just like a church. My God, what, what, what? when the Holy Ghost comes to church, there's a different sound in the church, isn't there? People get excited. Walter starts shouting, Pat's amen, and come on, every, hey, hey, hey. Pastors getting, getting the church of God jerks. Because there, there's something. And so they all just stick their wings out. and start, I looked up, and they're just going in circles. And it was the most amazing thing. They were on this elevator, and they were shooting up probably another 300 feet above where they were at. Except for this one silly goose. Now, I, I, I want to help some. Maybe y'all hadn't heard me tell this story. Or somebody here needs to hear this. They thought, this goose thought, that if he flapped harder, he could catch up to his buddies. Because that always works on this level. Oh, my God. When I'm on this level, if I flap faster, I'll, catch, I'll make up the ground. But when that thing turns up vertical, and they're going up, and I'm flapping, I'm, I'm pushing myself out of the, it's a river, it's a river of air, but it's a river. I'm pushing myself out of the river. And so this goose, he was flapping and honking. And, he, and he'd come back, he'd come back, and he'd hit it, and he'd go back out. He just kept flapping and working. He worked him. If a goose can sweat, he was sweating. Like I'm sweating right now. He, he was sweating, and finally, the, 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 the rest of the flock got up that two, three hundred feet, and, and the thermal died out, and they formed back up in that V, and off they went. And here's their buddy down here 
200 feet lower. And he just keeps flying with them, but he's, he ain't. He's with them, but he ain't a whip part of them. Oh, God. Yeah. He's headed in the same direction, but he's not on the same plane. The, the, look, this altar's open. Anytime you feel like you need it, <laughs> wind it's an elevation. So it's not by might. It's not by your effort. It's not by working, working, working. It's not by power, but it's by the Spirit. The, the, the baptism in the Holy Ghost is not an adder. It's not an upgrade to your relationship. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is an essential. Come on. I, it, you must be filled. I'm telling you. I ain't telling you you're going to hell if you're not filled, okay? Don't get messed up. But I'm telling you, you know, people say, can I get to heaven? I, I wouldn't want to go across the street without the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It's not can I or do I have to. It's my Lord. You get to. And friends, I want to help you. You don't get filled by the Holy Ghost by, by getting all the junk out of your life first and becoming perfect. You don't, you don't receive the baptism by, uh, I did, I, I've done all this stuff, fasting and praying three or four weeks, you know, starving yourself, trying to, trying to get the Holy Ghost. I see all my friends. They're on this level, and I'm trying, but I just can't keep up. Well, I done, I done, I done flapped out of my earpiece. <laughs> Honey, get in one of these services when the thermal, and just get, get in the river and stretch those arms out. And just go there. <laughs> I'm telling you, I would come to them altars. Oh, brother, brother, sister Klinger, brother, I had all the big guns pray for me. Brother Bolt, brother Swain, brother this and brother that, sister so and so, spitting in my face, hold on, let go, turn loose. <laughs> Seriously, heard it all. I, I wore, the war on the saints was me. I wore them saints out. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. If pastor gave an altar call, six months, they finally quit praying for me. They did. They quit praying. He's too hard-headed. They didn't say that, but I, now looking back, that's exactly what it okay, you, you, you can lead a horse to water. <laughs> you're going to have to, you have to stake him out in the desert before he wants to drink. <laughs> I was in the. I was about where Sister Myrtle is, maybe two seats over. Wasn't nothing, about like that. Nobody around me. Brother Swain, he's jumping up and down. A little bit short guy. We were looking at pictures last night. I see my pastor was cool, and uh, he uh, he just said, "I mean, the church was hopping." He said, "Just bless them," and he kind of pointed my way, and I took it. I said, "Ain't nobody around here. I'm gonna go ahead and let it go." And I I started releasing what I sensed in my spirit the first time they prayed for me. Come on, it wasn't no different than the first time they prayed for me. The first time they prayed for me, I could have gone through to the back if I hadn't if I hadn't been working so hard. But it took me six months to figure out how to just stretch my wings. Say, this is something you want me to have and I want it, then what's the deal? <laughs> just gotta learn to let go. Go with that river. Wherever where the river goes, it, it brings healing. If you're wounded, there's, there's healing in that river for you. You get healed, then you become the fountain that the river flows from. Then that river flowing through you becomes a, a river of healing to others. Everywhere the river goes brings life. Everywhere. Even into the, 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 the swamp land. King James says miry places. <laughs> Wherever the river goes, it brings life. So let the river flow. I ain't got nothing else. Come on, joints. 
<laughs> anybody, anybody got a supply? Wow, this has been powerful. I was going to preach on angels, by the way. <laughs> you think one showed up? <laughs> I think maybe more than one. <laughs> well, you know, in, in Luke, and I'll just, what time is it? I'll quit, Lord. We've, oh, yeah, it's time to quit. But uh, in Luke chapter 2, there, in, 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 in the New Testament, there's more mention of angels. I think 178 or 87 times in the New Testament angels are mentioned to just like 107 or something in the Old. Uh, in the book, and, and when you look at the hierarchy in the, uh, in the New Testament, the book of Revelation has the most mention of angels. So in the last days, obviously, angelic activity is going to become fierce. <laughs> it's going to be wild. Of course, now John had a vision. He was seeing what's really going on around us right now. So I don't know that it's going to be more prevalent. It's just going to be uh, noticeable to those that have an eye to see. So in uh, so you got you got Revelation has seventy some odd. Then there's two or three other books, and then I think number four on the list is Luke. Luke has twenty four times uh, there's a mention of angels, fifteen of those in the first two chapters. And then you go a couple of books down, Hebrews. So Luke has twenty four uh, references to angels. Hebrews has has twelve, and most of those are in chapter two. So if you go home tonight, read Luke two, and Hebrews two. And I want you to see what angels are really about and what they're doing. I, I aggravated some people at my sister's funeral when I told them that my sister did not die and become a guardian angel. You know, people are taught wrongly. And folks, this is where we get Santeria. We get, we get these, these Mexican drug lords that are, are in, the, in the Catholic church that are performing human sacrifice thinking it is a Christian ritual because they, they, it starts with, a, with a, a, an unbiblical idea and the end of anything that's unbiblical always leads to death. Get that. So your, your auntie did not become your guardian angel. There's a, there's a, there's a, a huge divide between humanity and, 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 and angels. Or we'll just call them spiritual beings. There are many different kinds of spiritual beings. Cherubim, seraphim, living ones, angels, the zoe. I mean, just on and on and on and on. And, on. We're, and we'll get into that here next year. We're going to be talking a lot about the unseen world. But these, there's a, there's a guy in, 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 I think it's New York, uh, a Brazilian pastor, had a great mega church, was going, and then he started preaching these uh, messages he was getting from an angel. Christian church, charismatic church. And so he starts putting a chair on the platform for this angel. Don't take no rocket science. Not, you don't have to be a prophet to know where that's headed. And he just, he was finally kicked out of his, his organization because he just went off the wall. Folks, this is my authority. This is the rule. This, this, this is God speaking. And both Paul and John, probably Peter too, I'm trying to remember if Peter had a reference, but they all gave reference to the fact even if an angel comes and preaches some other gospel, let him be accursed. This is the truth. If it don't line up here, it's not, it's not valid for, for church uh, practice. It's, you, know, you hear me? There's only two angels that are given names in the entirety of the Scripture. Only two, Michael, Gabriel. Got, got some other names? No. <laughs> What's the devil's name? He doesn't have a name. That Satan is not his name. Satan, the, he the Hebrew for that, it, Natasha or whatever, it, it's the accuser. Uh, 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 Lucifer is a is not even a Greek or a Hebrew word. This is, comes right out of the Latin. <coughs> okay, the, it, was a, it was a translation uh, finagle. The writers of the Bible did not even think the, the Satan is what it is. When you read Satan in the scriptures, there's actually an article in front of it in the original language. It's the Satan, the accuser, 
the condemner. So they did not even think that Satan was worthy to be given a name. Come on. So if, if, if an angel appears to you and, and gives you his, or his name and, and, and starts revealing this supernatural stuff to you, you don't have to be a prophet. You just got to know the book. This ain't God. Uh, there's a, 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 I think Todd White, had, you know, he's, he, there, he sees an angel that's at, at his meetings and, and he's got her name. Uh, there's another there's another preacher that that had a had a, a a feather in a jar that came from an angel that was delivering him these are Christian preachers hello hello where in here does it say angels have feathers I will freak you out when I start this teaching <laughs> to let you know that that, that the seraphim, the, the word seraphim is the same word that's used in Genesis chapter 3 for the Satan. Freak you out. The, they're spirit beings that are actually, who says a snake is a bad thing? Anyway, that, that's, that's way deeper than I intended to go here tonight. But I just want to kind of throw some little tidbits out for you to, just to help you to understand. Don't you believe every spirit? But you try the Spirit. How do I try it? First and foremost, right here. Right here, this book. If you're going to stay in, between, in the bubble in the middle, you're going to have to know the Word of God. If you don't know the book, you don't have anything that the Holy Ghost can use to operate out of you, the, 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 the spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment starts right there in the Word. Hang, hang with it. All right. I didn't, didn't intend to go there, but I did. So at least now you... That's where I was going to go tonight. Do what's not next year yet. No, what? No. Have I preached that long? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. If y'all don't have anything else, stand to your feet, please. And let's, uh, hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. So, Lord, I, I just ask you to help us to stay right in the middle of your flow. Lord, we don't need anything extra. <laughs> we just need you. Father, I don't need an angel feather. I, 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 don't, I don't need a golden tablet from heaven. Lord, I just need you. I need your word. I need to know how to pray, and I need to know how to praise and let the river of the Spirit flow. So, Father, I'm asking you this Christmas season, as we gather with our family members, mm, Father God, I pray that, that a, a, a supernatural conviction, Lord, we're going to take care of things on our side. We're going to pray. We're going to praise. We're going we're gonna to live right. And, Lord, when we walk into these gatherings, Pam, as I started praying, I just saw you and your, your family. Lord, I thank you that our sons and our daughters are going to feel and sense a supernatural conviction and a drawing. Lord, it, 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 it's, it's not going to come from, from us preaching at them, but just simply our staying in the river. They're going to sense that. That, Father God, that Pat Garrett's kids are going to sense their need for you. That, Father God, every one of us in this room tonight have family members that need you. So, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you, <laughs> let there be a supernatural flow. And as we flow, Holy Spirit, draw men. Draw men. Draw women. Draw our children and our grandchildren. Father, we claim the promise of your word that says our sons and our daughters would prophesy. So, Lord, we stand firmly on that ground. And Lord, we ask you, Father God, if they're going to prophesy, they're going to have to get saved. <laughs> so, Lord, save them, deliver them, heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let this be the year, Father, that the prodigal 
comes home. Father, let this, let this be the year the prodigal comes home for Christmas. Oh, Jesus. Mm. And Lord, there are some of us have family members that we don't even care enough about to reach out to them. Lord, I, I repent for that right now. Lord, I'm angry and unforgiving. Forgive me. Help me to love enough to reach out. Mm. Mm. Wow, you ever prayed and prayed yourself into conviction? <laughs> I just did. Mm. Holy Spirit, forgive me. Whew. Let's see where I've blown it. I've not reacted like you would have me to. And Lord, for that, forgive and help me to help me to make it right. In Jesus' name. Hmm. Come on, is there anybody else beside me? Come on. You need to make that right right now. Come on, just, just right now. Now, I mean, just right in the middle of my prayer, the Lord said, okay, you're praying. What about this here? Oh, God. Didn't even think about that. Come on and pray. We'll be here Sunday morning. Love you guys.